bendito sea Dios, Padre, Hijo y Espíritu Santo. Y bendito sea Dios, 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 Dios de todo poder, ante ti, todo corazón queda abierto, todo deseo revelado y todo lo que ocultamos queda expuesto. Haz que tu Espíritu nos limpie los corazones y purifique los pensamientos para perfectamente que amemos y dignamente proclamemos la grandeza de tu santo nombre. Por Cristo, nuestra salvación. chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Señor Todopoderoso, todavía han de venir gentes y habitantes de muchas ciudades. Entonces, los de una ciudad se dirigirán a los de otra y les dirán, vamos a buscar al Señor Todopoderoso y pedirle que nos bendiga. Y otros les contestarán, nosotros también iremos. Y vendrán a Jerusalén muchos pueblos y naciones numerosas a buscar al Señor Todopoderoso y pedirle que los bendiga. En aquel tiempo, diez extranjeros de las demás naciones agarrarán por la ropa a un judío y le dirán, queremos ir con ustedes porque hemos oído que Dios está con ustedes. Palabra de Dios. Nuestra, nuestro salmo será del Book of Common Prayer, el, el Salmo 87. So today's psalm will be from the Book of Common Prayer in English, Psalm 87, we will read in unison. On the holy mountain stands the city he has founded. The Lord loves the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Glorious things are spoken of you, O city of our God. I count Egypt and Babylon among those who know me. Behold, the Lystia, Tyre, and Ethiopia, and in Zion were they born. But of Zion it shall be said, Everyone was born in her. And the Most High Himself shall sustain her. For the Lord will reward. 
road to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. But they did not receive him, because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. The Gospel of the Lord. to you now in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of them. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him, but they did not receive him because his face was turned toward Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. These disciples have been journeying with him for a while now. They were called to follow him, and they did. They prayed with him. They ate with him. They have seen him work miracles in themselves and in others. They have seen him cast out demons and raise people up from the grave. They have seen him heal the sick and feed the hungry. Walking with Jesus is no joke. Now they have been called to go out with authority and power and proclaim the kingdom of God and to cure the sick too. But there is a price. Jesus says that following him will cost them the lives they knew. That they will have to take up their cross daily, denying themselves because life in him demands sacrifice. They are to take nothing for their journey. No staff, nor bag, nor bread, nor money, not even an extra tunic because it won't fit in college courts anyways. <laughs> <laughs> After all this, they get to this new place in their journey and it doesn't go as planned. They had expectations for what this particular part of the journey would be. They expected to arrive into town and for everything that they had known to be true thus far to be received with open arms. That who they are and the path they have chosen to travel would not be challenged, and yet it is. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him, but they did not receive him because his face was turned toward Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? It's hard not to laugh at the drama of James and John here. It seems a bit extreme, doesn't it? Jesus told them that if they're not welcome, they should shake the dust off their feet. But today they are ready to burn it to the ground. <laughs> And when I first read this gospel story, I thought, as a senior, surely I must be Jesus in this story. I have turned my face toward the Jerusalem that is graduation, and I figured that all this wisdom I have accumulated here so far made me more like the freshly transfigured Jesus, walking calmly into uncharted territory. I'm afraid to say I was wrong. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but at some point I realized I was in the 
this new place, and the welcome wasn't as warm as I had hoped for. I realized entering back into an in-person seminary experience wasn't the smooth transition I expected. And while I won't admit one way or the other if I have asked Jesus to let me command fire down from heaven on this place, I will admit that I have felt more like James and John recently. Last week, Reverend Nancy beautifully reminded us the cost and reward of those eight letters and two words, follow me. And yet, I still found myself in a place this week where I felt a bit self-righteous. How dare this be difficult after all I have given up? I have been following this call for a long time. Isn't it supposed to get easier? <laughs> and yet, here I read that the Jesus I love doesn't encourage James and John. He doesn't laugh off their response because they're perhaps being a bit dramatic. And he does not gently remind them that they were supposed to just shake off their feet. He turns and rebukes them. James and John are upset that this new place isn't accepting them with open arms, and they want to defend him. So why does Jesus rebuke them? While I was getting ready for this week, I was reading about this text, and commentaries don't seem to offer much. <laughs> and to be fair, it's only five verses long. <laughs> and it seems that the general consensus is that Jesus is rebuking their reaction to being rejected. And that makes sense to me. We know that in order to follow Jesus, we are to participate in love, even to those who hate us. And to walk humbly so that, like our song says this morning, others may look at us and say, this one was born here. And yet, I think what is left out of our translation this morning is precisely the answer to the question. Other translations include these extra words. But he turned and rebuked them and said, you do not know what spirit you are of. For the Son of Man has not come to destroy the lives of human beings, but to save them. Mm -hmm. Then they went on to another village. <laughs> <laughs> While James and John's reaction to being rejected is certainly a problem, the source of the problem is that they have forgotten what spirit they are of. It wasn't their desire to burn the place down that needed rebuking, but because that desire arose out of their forgetting what it is to be called out by God in the first place. They have forgotten what it felt like to look up and realize God is looking back. They forgot what it felt like to feel unwanted and unloved, only to hear the voice of God saying, follow me. They have been walking with Jesus for so long that they forgot just how extraordinary the journey was to begin with. Mm -hmm. My friends, if you have been on this journey for years, or if you have only just arrived, and are weary because right now it isn't turning out the way you expected, or you have just been walking for so long that you don't know if you can take another step, heart. Our human emotions are not to be rebuked, for as Dan says, learning is emotional, and following Jesus is even more so. But hear today's gospel and remember. Remember what it felt like to be called out by God, to look up in despair and see God looking back. Remember what it was to feel broken and unwanted, only to hear the voice of God say, follow me. Remember, so that you may be fed and filled, and walk into these new places and know what spirit you are of. 
the spirit of Christ that has been called out into new life within us, and that will never leave or forsake us. Amen. Amen. Oremos por la iglesia y por el mundo. Omnipotente Dios, concede que cuantos confesamos tu nombre, estemos unidos en tu verdad. Vivamos unánimes en tu amor y manifestemos tu gloria en el mundo. Señor, en tu misericordia, dirige al pueblo de este país y de todas las naciones, por caminos de justicia y paz, para que nos respetemos unos a otros y procuremos el bien común. Señor, en tu misericordia, danos reverencia por la tierra, que es creación tuya para que utilicemos debidamente sus recursos en servicio de los demás y para tu honra y gloria. Señor, en tu misericordia, bendice a aquellos cuyas vidas están unidas a las nuestras y concede que sirvamos a Cristo en ellos y nos amemos unos a otros así como Él nos ama. Señor, en tu misericordia, te damos gracias por los estudiantes de nuestro seminario. Bendice a Darcy Mercier y a Darling Membreño. Señor, Señor, en tu misericordia, también te damos gracias por el personal de nuestro seminario. Bendice a G.G. Park y a aquellos que trabajan en este lugar. Señor, en tu misericordia, atiende nuestra súplica. Consuela y sana a todos aquellos que sufren en cuerpo, mente o espíritu. Especialmente a Angie y a David a la familia Stone, a Sheila y a Ken M. En sus tribulaciones, dales valor y esperanza y llévalos al gozo de tu salvación. Señor, en tu misericordia, atiende nuestra sociedad. Encomendamos a tu misericordia a todos los difuntos, especialmente a Elizabeth y a Joanna Stone, para que tu voluntad se cumpla en ellos y te pedimos que nos hagas partícipes con todos tus santos de tu reino eterno. Señor, en tu misericordia, Dios eterno y poderoso, gobernante de todas las cosas en el cielo y en la tierra, Acepta en piedad las oraciones de tu pueblo y danos fuerza para hacer tu voluntad. Por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Amén. Amén. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. Amen. Dios Todopoderoso, tenga misericordia de 
ustedes, perdone, perdone todos sus pecados, Jesucristo nuestro Señor, les fortalezca en toda bondad y por el poder del Espíritu Santo, les guarde en la vida eterna. Amén. Amén. La paz del Señor sea siempre con ustedes. disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? When he turned and rebuked them, then they went on to another village.
nos creaste para ti, y cuando caímos en el pecado y quedamos bajo el poder del mal y de la muerte, tú nos tuviste misericordia, enviaste a Jesucristo, tu Hijo único y eterno, a compartir la naturaleza humana y vivir y morir como nosotros, y a reconciliarnos contigo, Dios y Padre de todos y todas. Sobre la cruz, Jesús extendió sus brazos y, obedeciendo tu voluntad, se ofreció como sacrificio perfecto para el mundo eterno, entero. La noche en que lo entregaron al sufrimiento y a la muerte, nuestro Señor Jesucristo tomó el pan y después de ofrecerte gracias, lo partió y se lo dio a sus discípulos y dijo, Tomen y coman. Esto es mi cuerpo que se entrega por ustedes. Hagan esto en memoria mía. Después de cenar, tomó el vino y después de ofrecerte gracias, se los digo y dijo, Beban todos. Esto es mi sangre del nuevo pacto que por ustedes y por todos se derrama para perdonar los pecados. Cada vez que lo beban, Hagan esto en memoria mía. Mediante este fin. Por tanto, proclamamos el misterio de la fe. Cristo ha muerto, Cristo ha resucitado, Cristo ha Mediante este sacrificio y acción de gracias, Padre nuestro, celebramos nuestra liberación. Y recordando que Cristo murió, resucitó y subió al cielo, te ofrecemos estos dones. Santifícalos por tu Espíritu, que sean para tu pueblo el cuerpo y la sangre de tu Hijo, la sangre comida y bebida de la vida nueva y sin fin que tenemos en él. Santifícalos también para que fielmente recibamos este santo sacramento y que servamos firmes, unidos y en paz. Y en el día final, llévanos con todo tu pueblo santo al gozo de tu reino eterno. Todo esto te lo pedimos por tu Hijo Jesucristo, por él con él y en él, en la unidad del Espíritu Santo, tuyos son todo el honor y la gloria, Padre Todopoderoso, ahora y siempre. Amén. Siguiendo la enseñanza de nuestro Salvador, oremos diciendo, Thank mm -hmm. you.
Aleluya, Cristo nuestro Pascua, se sacrificio por nosotros. de Dios para el pueblo de Dios. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and thanksgiving.
fire spreads too deep, everlasting love. Fire spreads too deep, everlasting love. Dios eterno, Padre celestial, en tu gracia nos has dejado como miembros míos el Hijo nuestro Salvador Jesucristo, y nos has adoptado la vida espiritual en la sangre libre de su cuerpo y de su sangre. Enviamos ahora la paz a tu mundo y damos fortaleza y la valentía para la parte y servirte con la alegría de que me perdonan todos los cosas por el juicio de nuestro Señor. Amén. Son, the Holy Spirit, may find you and name you always. Amen. Salgamos en el nombre de Cristo. Amen. Amen.